Hey everyone, uh, there's construction going on outside our, uh, our apartment and we were, we were hoping we could get like, uh, like a nice quiet time to do the uh, intro for the uh, second day. This by the way is the second day, this is January 2nd, uh, Thursday and it just stopped. But they're going to do construction, I don't know when it's going to start, probably in a couple of months, right next to us. And we don't have a studio. This is, you know, this is our apartment. This is where we both work. And I think part of the uh, philosophy of what we do is that this is not going to be something that's foreign to our lives. Like this is, uh, th we work while life goes on. And that's what we want to show in the video. So it, I'm sorry if my phone rings or I'm sorry if there's like a ton of construction work outside. Like we'll try to make to work around it and make it work. But if we can't control it, that's what's gonna happen. So you're not gonna get these like studio produced videos. No, this is our home. And this is what happens around our home. So it's kind of dumb to just try to hide the fact that we're at home. Nope, this is it. This is what you're gonna get. So for the uh, <laughs> day two, we're gonna keep going with our three day painting. And today we're gonna do values. This is the uh, drawing after I put the um, transparent acrylic binder. Now the one I use is this one, uh, but honestly, you know, you can use any of these. I can't get these back home now. I'm going to have to use this one, uh, which is, you know, which will be totally fine too. Uh, so I, I put three coats of that probably waiting about maybe an hour or half an hour between coats uh, in the front and in the back there's also two coats so and that's super important so that the paper is actually uh, stable enough uh, it looks different from the drawing that we were doing yesterday because I'm drawing with a water soluble uh, pencil so it actually picks up a lot of the pigment and it spreads it around and and the lines actually become a little kind of uh, um, lighter so if you know if, if if you're concerned about that and you want your drawing to remain exactly the same just do it with a regular you know waxy color pencil and of course anything that's water soluble won't pick that up but i don't mind i actually like the uh, sort of tone that it gives uh, my painting and you can play around with it you could use uh, you know different uh, values of uh, color pencil different different hues uh, so if you want something you know if you're gonna do an orange painting and you want some you know something that's complementary you could use a blue color pencil it depends you know it's it's up to you it depends on what you want you know the role that you want your drawing to play in your final painting uh, what we're gonna do today because we we concentrated on on drawing you know, it, everything that had to do with drawing on that first session, which means uh, structure, composition. Uh, today, we're going to think about value. And the way we're going to think about value with, without thinking, let's say, about color, is we're just going to use, you know, an umber. Uh, this is raw umber. Um, so it's kind of like a neutral earth tone. And we're going to use this and we're going to thin it out. and. I try not to use a lot of medium. I've been uh, uh, lessening my use of medium throughout the years, but when I when I have to use it, and especially in these paintings that are going that I'm painting, you know, daily on a daily basis, um, I want it to dry it super quickly. You can use any alkyd medium. The one I'm using is liquid, but you could use any alkyd medium, and we're going to use it very thinly. Uh, the cool thing about this is that it's going to be dry. Uh, by tomorrow so tomorrow when we do the you know the final painting uh, it's gonna be touch dry and it'll be perfectly fine to paint on so that's it raw umber and that's what we're gonna use and in terms of uh, brushes I'm gonna use uh, synthetics so I have small synthetic brushes um, this one's a little bit larger. I'm just gonna lay in a, like, a, uh, like a value, uh, an overall value on top at, at the beginning. And I have uh, smaller kind of flats. They're not long flats. This one's probably like a longer flat, but they are, you know, they're fine. 
to to get into more specific detail but i'm not going to go into way way too much detail and this is maybe if i have to get in there and do like smaller areas and if i want to be a little more precise but i think these will do uh and that's about it so let's get to it i have to uh just use like a very small amount of, of medium uh i usually just put it right into the palette that's about it so that's like a little goop of, of medium okay um we decided both uh danny and i that um doing vo was probably the easiest way to go about trying to solve the uh, audio for the videos. Um, honestly, there's so much like, you know, uh, just noise coming from everywhere in our apartment right now that this is probably, you know, our safest bet and our cleanest bet. Um, if it were up to me, to be honest, we would be doing like real time videos all the time, you know, four or five hour <laughs> videos and they would just feel like live painting videos but I know that the audience for uh, <laughs> for five hour YouTube videos would be uh, very very small I, I know some of you would really really enjoy um, just to you know just to hear somebody you know talk things out while they're working but to be honest um, I don't know I don't think people you know, if this is this is going to be a daily thing, so I don't think just listening to someone for hours and hours and hours on end would be a safe bet, especially for us that we're just starting out with these videos. So yeah, so I uh, I think that you know VO is going to be the cleanest way to um, to do this, and videos are going to be you know sped up uh, because again you know real time just regular painting is it's tough to watch I know that you know for the ton of you that paint it's actually really nice to see the pacing of the painting and that doesn't quite come across when you're um, doing a sped up video but uh, we'll see we'll try to work things out this, these are gonna be daily videos so there's gonna be 250 plus videos every year I'm sure that we're gonna be able to work things out eventually so don't worry if you guys want to be helpful and you know just be kind and be nice just know that this you know these are the first videos we're you know we're putting out um, just uh, suggest you know a bunch of stuff that you think would work best um, just give us your opinion we are trying to you know kind of feel it out and 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 see what works out for um, for the two of us and um, and I'm sure that will become more and more comfortable with you know with our workspace and with you know with the tools that we have and how to make those work you know the best so that it's comfortable for us you know and this is the most important part again we're not producing videos and charging you know a ton of money so that you guys can have a you know a studio produced video this is not that that's not what you're gonna get we're working really really hard because it's still like a ton of hard work just trying to um, to put out these these daily videos with nice image quality hopefully good commentary and experiences that both you and I can learn from I can learn from in, in the in terms of um, you know paintings that will teach me something but you know as as a channel that experiences that both Danny and I can also learn from so that's super important um, now uh, talking specifically about the um, underpainting I'm doing right now uh, I was every time I do an underpainting every single time I'm reminded of a book that I can only like super recommend which is the uh, Rockwell on, on Rockwell book it's a pretty old book I don't know what I'm trying to look on my phone what the um, the original, uh, yeah, the publication date was 1979. So it's an old book. It's a Watson Guptill uh, book. It's a large, kind of oversized book. It has a ton of like color reproductions. Again, imagine color reproductions from the 70s, but they are absolutely excellent. And what you what you get uh, in the book is really like an X-ray into Rockwell's brain. It's incredible. Uh, he really shows you how 
he works from thumbnails to drawings um, to like the drawing of a final idea, but then to how he hires models, you know, his neighbors. Um, then how the photo shoot works. Remember, Rockwell always had the photographer also take pictures of him uh, because he always thought he was, you know, the best person to communicate what he wanted out of the expressions he wanted from his models. So he was always posing. So he would get the, these photographs and um, then he would do his, I think he would then go uh, project his photographs because he did project. I mean, this bothers a lot of people, but to me, that's totally fine. And he would do his drawing where he would make alterations. Um, and then he would do, he would always do a final charcoal drawing for every illustration he would make. That's insane. Like, if you think about it, he was, he had two weeks to do um, his paintings. And, oh, the coolest thing about this book is that he breaks down his, um, his schedule. So he tells you how many days he would spend on a drawing, how many days on the underpainting, how many days on the first pass. It's incredible. It's like, it's, it's one of the most, I think, um, uh, just down to earth, like real painting, just somebody telling you, okay, you know, no secrets. This is exactly how I go about making my paintings. Um, usually you don't get that with artists. Um, sometimes painters are like super, super secretive with how they do stuff because they, they believe that, you know, in, in the manner in which we do stuff lies our success. And, um, and that's, I, I've always thought that that's kind of, I don't know, that's a strange thing. Like art should be universal. It should be available to everyone that wants to like ex have an experience from it, learn from it. So uh, part of the efforts in doing this channel is also that, I mean, it's, I, I, I don't, I mean, I would hate to sound pedantic and, and presumptions in saying that this is educational because it's not, you know, really, really the aim for it to be academic. But it, it is, it is, you know, my, my sharing the pleasure that I find in painting because it is an absolute joy and pleasure. And I think that um, instead of just showing something that's technique driven, like product driven, like, hey, this is what you do to just get this result. And, and results that can ooh and ah everyone. This is just very kind of solid, you know, uh, easy, I think easy to learn and easy to apply uh, painting. So what we're doing here is just literally thin down raw umber paint. Uh, I'm just thinking about values. This is a very simple painting at its core because what I'm trying to get in this painting is just have a base, have a really kind of robust uh, dark shape, you know, pyramid shape base that can hold almost like as a prop that can hold up my, uh, my portrait and the portrait, I, I, you know, I, I, I said this, um, in the drawing stage, but I really, really like, and I, I tried to emphasize that when I saw, um, I had the opportunity to, to, to do so with the underpainting, just the way it is framed, you know, it's kind of cut into these irregular shapes by the hair and then kind of wrapped around into this jagged, almost arrow pointing downwards with the, um, with the scarf. So I really, really liked that. I, I, I thought initially when I saw the shapes, when I was drawing, I was like, okay, this is gonna be actually like a cool part, something that's really, really interesting to do um, once I get to, uh, to my values. I can really, really emphasize like the graphic quality that that shape is gonna have. Um, and the fact that I can um, make the face be a center of interest because it's, uh, it's gonna be such a light value surrounded by such darker values. Darker values in comparison, let's call them that for now. Let's not, let's not just say dark as, as if it was like our darkest dark, but they are gonna be darker values in comparison to, to the um, lighter uh, shape of her head. So I, I loved it. That to me is almost like my driving force through, through the painting. It's just knowing that, okay, there's a potential of this to be um, super powerful, to be like a really strong, strong tool that can actually tell the viewer, okay, you have to, you know, 
this is going to be your center of interest and it's going to be surrounded by all these other darker areas that can be um, that you have to almost like explore their cavernous. I mean, you have to really go in there and find your way through like these darker shapes that are in, in the bottom, but then go back into the light. It's almost like you're traveling through this tunnel, through this cave, and you see, you know, you see the light. You see, you, you see uh, in the background, you see this little kind of, uh, um, this little bit of light that's showing you the way. And, and that's where you're going. I, I think that's, that's the painting. And I know it's a painting of, you know, it's literally a portrait. But again, if we can find those things that make the portrait become something else, it's going to be so much more enjoyable and so much more exciting to paint because you're not going to be just thinking about, well, does it look like my sitter? Does it have like uh, the specific expression my sitter you know, was was holding at that particular time. Are my features right? Are my angles right? If 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 that's what's holding your painting together, then it's gonna just be formal qualities. There's there's just gonna be like like very kind of formal, not boring. I'm 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 not gonna say boring, but very simple formal qualities holding your painting together, and your image is gonna be solely about those things. And that's fine, but think about it. Like, if it's solely about those things, if those things are wrong, if somehow you're off in a couple of those things, then your whole painting is going to be off. So, but instead, if your painting is about something else, not something totally foreign, you know, to the portrait, but about something a little bit, you know, kind of more, then the viewer is going to be like, okay, there is a face that is communicating expression, and I can, you know, I can relate to that as a human being. But there's so much more to this painting that I'm going to enjoy, you know, uh, um, apart from the face. Like, you know, thanks to the portrait, I am, you know, understanding it as a recognizable form. But, you know, but beyond that, it's going to open the door to like some other things that are hopefully going to be like super exciting once I get to the uh, to the painting part of it. Uh, I, I'm quite enamored by by the bottom part, the little bits of details in the bottom part. I think the uh, the strap is going to be super cool to paint. I think it's enough detailed so that that the bottom area just is just alive. And I really like that. I like the uh, abstract sort of expression of the hair. I like how it kind of juts out. And I, start, I, I, I know I talked about this when I, uh, when I was drawing it, but the way it angles out, like it almost points itself to the right kind of corner. Um, kind of juts out to the to the upper right corner. I I, I really enjoy that too. Um, and again, it's you know it's a very very simple kind of painting, but I think those those simple things have to be kind of just right so that it it um, so that it works. Here I'm like I don't know if I'm I was fumbling a little bit with the eyes, but I really wanted to have that kind of slant in the eyeball that is telling you that, you know, her eyes are at an, at an angle because it's so important to, to always remember that they are spheres. And as a sphere, the, one of the resources that we have to say that, that you know, eye is an, at, at an angle is the fact that, you know, we can take, you know, these little uh, drawing moments within the eye and make them ellipses so they can speak about perspective. And I'm kind of finishing this off, and I'm very, very happy with with where it is because I I think again, in terms of like bigger, uh, darker masses, you know, bigger relationships in terms of value with those bigger, darker masses and that smaller, lighter mass, like right up in the middle, um, and the top, you know, part of the image, it works well, and um, again, surrounded by value. I have to be very mindful of that tomorrow when I do the painting. To have my colors sort of match that. So I'm very happy with this. Again, solid, simple. That's what we're going for. So I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow for the uh, painting. Bye.